Welcome everybody again to the Martin Siegel Theater here at the Graduate Center CUNY. And my name is Frank Hinchcock, the Executive Director, Director of Program. And again, thank you to uh, the playwrights um, for coming over here, for Julian and uh, Sarah to, you know, to put this fantastic program together. We are running it slightly late, a little bit late. I'm um, not too much, but um, I would like to ask you, you know, to be you know, yep. the moderator and, um, and, uh, and guide us through, through the time. We're going to wait. So we see some people in off uniform coming here, all right. and uh, and so we. But we have about 15, 20 minutes. So uh, again, thank you all for staying and taking time of your day to be with us. Okay, um, we're missing uh, Emilio Williams because he couldn't uh, come, the playwright of smartphones. But definitely, we're very happy to have uh, Borja Ortiz uh, de Gondra, the playwright of Picasso and his barber. Uh, we have uh, Guillem uh, Clua, the playwright of Promised Land, and Cristina Colmena, the playwright of the, uh, we just heard of Typings and Happily Ever After. Uh, definitely, um, they do, uh, they have different backgrounds, and uh, you both are living in the U.S. now, right? Partly. Yes? You don't? No, no You just came from Barcelona. No. Okay. Um, so, uh, what... Um, for me, it was very interesting to, to hear the, the, the different focus uh, that you have <coughs> in this play. Um, what, um, uh, how would you put this play in the context of your own writing? So, so to give us an idea of how, how that it's, it's really, you know, uh, a different <laughs> approach this time or, or, uh, or, or not? Or you're, feeling, you're really looking into that kind of epic... Uh, History themes, you no know, Picasso, uh, psychology, New York, uh, kind of uh, Booby Allen uh, uh, psychology. I don't know. Uh, please, what me? Yeah, we can start with <laughs> first. Oh, with um, well, this play was a commission, so it wasn't a, a story I thought about. It was a story that was asked me. Uh, I was I was asked to write it. And uh, at the beginning, I didn't know how to do it because it didn't have anything to do with what I am and what I have been doing. Because I come from a part of the country, which is the Basque country, which is very conflicted in its relationship with Spain. And basically, um, it's a region where uh, violence has been uh, like an everyday part of our lives for a long time. And for most of my, the beginning of my career, I was writing about uh, why don't we, why where we're not able as a society to look at it and say something, which is like we're turning our heads and not looking at it. And then this, this story comes and, and, a, and there's a production and, and they tell me, well, you have, would you like to write about this? And uh, I didn't know anything about bullfighting at all. You know, I've never in my life had been in, uh, in a bullfight. I knew very little about Picasso and the question was how, I'm, how do I relate to this, to this story? And um, Funny enough, uh, you start digging into, into the story. Uh, there are, of course, technical problems. How do you write about such a character as Picasso? And it's like, what can you tell about him? Um, and uh, the curious thing for me was that um, I, I started to realize that what was interesting for me in, in this story about Picasso and Arias is that there are exiles, there are expats, and they can't go back to their country. And they have been living forever in France. And, uh, Picasso was almost French, but they kept hanging to their idea of Spain, which was no longer the real country. And that was also my, my uh, experience, because uh, I, I lived for five years in France, then I kept um, going between Paris, France, and Geneva, turning around. Then I came to, to uh, uh, New York, and I lived in New York. And actually, the play was written here in New York. Um, and, and, you know, for me, the idea was like... Um, what can I tell about this? And what, what I can't, I, I could tell at that point is that uh, we as a society have a, have a very conflicting relationship to our country. You know, parts of the country say the country doesn't exist. There's nothing like Spain. Um, and um, 
I, I try to be uh, honest to the characters in the sense that um, they, they hung to an idea of, of um, what freedom is, what democracy could be. You know, it's, it's a comedy, but basically it, it speaks about people who de really believed in communism and uh, thought it was going to uh, win you know, the, the war. And, and people uh, in, in 52, when the play uh, takes place, they think, okay, Franco is just going to last a couple of years and this will be over and freedom will be here. So for a Spanish audience who knows that Franco was in power until 75, this resonates as um, why didn't we do anything? Uh, why, uh, as a society, we kept this guy in power for so long? And um, also for a younger generation, it's like you take democracy for granted, but it's not to be taken for granted. You know, there were people fighting for it. The interesting it. would be thing to see how, how do the other yeah, plays <laughs> yeah. connect right. to that theme. Yeah. Well, I think that um, I usually write short stories. And, and I usually work about uh, relationships and routine that uh, I think that in both plays appear. Mm -hmm. uh, routine in, in the work and routine also in, in relationships. And when, when you get married, and you, um, but you still feel lonely. And yeah, and I like uh, to work also with uh, mixing humor and drama and, and work about a serious situation like uh, in typing that is something very tragic. Uh, actually with a recession in Spain, it's happening something very similar to this and I think that is going to be a lottery also in the cards uh, very soon. <laughs> but uh, I like uh, use the humor because it's that uh, when you are laughing about something that is not so funny, uh, you uh, have this feeling of alienation and maybe you, you see the things uh, different. Maybe you, you, that, uh, this kind of place or story that I wrote uh, made you think in another way that, well, maybe it's not so funny. And yeah, it's, it's what I usually work in about problems of communication and, and love in its aftermath, like yeah. a catastrophe, yeah. like a Hurricane Sandy, yeah. <laughs> That's a good transition <laughs> at the end. <laughs> um, I have a background in journalism. I studied journalism and worked as a journalist for, for quite a, a long time. And uh, when I switched to fiction, I realized that that influenced me a lot. Uh, the themes I'm mostly interested in uh, were the themes that I was interested in when, when I was a journalist. And usually I pick uh, the subjects from newspapers or from TV or uh, from the news. Uh, and I think that mm, didn't only influence my work, but also it, uh, it has a place in, in a whole generation of playwrights, so, so to speak, that is uh, working right now in Barcelona. They are actually looking out, looking uh, to reality in order to find the themes for their plays, rather than looking inside and looking at your own uh, belly button to you know, dig into yourself and just speak about what's going out in your head. It's right there, the reality is so rich and it's so full and it has so much prime material to talk about that is nurturing our place, I think, in, in a new way. And I think it's, it's very interesting what's, what's going on right now in, in Barcelona as far as playwriting, because uh, lots of new plays are emer emerging and that's very positive for, for our culture. Right. What, how do you feel the difference now, especially like as you've come to New York too and you've seen uh, different kind of, uh, kinds of, of theater here? that somehow influenced, like for example, when Lorca was in New York, definitely in his case, was a very important uh, visit in order to how he, uh, from then on, moved into playwriting and writing other kind of, of things, etc. cetera. In, in your case, in both of you, as you've been uh, here, you, have you been uh, here in yeah, New York before? Yeah, I spent some time here. Uh, did, did, did you notice if New York has changed you in a way 
um, in, in that, in, in your, uh, your point of view of, of how, you're writing, how you were writing before or after New York or not? I have to think about that. <laughs> Just go ahead, guys. Um, for me, I think that uh, maybe it's the, the feeling of alienation that I use for working and, and writing is the, this kind of uh, um, absurd perspective about things. And I think that New York is a great place to have an absurd perspective of <laughs> things uh, because it's so surrealistic and, and also because uh, you have a distance uh, from Spain and, and maybe from your real life. Or I have been here two years and a half and I, I guess that I continue considering my real life in Spain. This, is, this has to change now. But um, I think that this distance, uh, for me, is a very a, a good help to, to think about things in a different way. It, it definitely influenced me when, when I lived here yeah, in 2006 and 2008. Um, because I was aware that my audience maybe wasn't uh, the Barcelona audi audience. It, it, it became global. Yeah. Well, some of my, um, of my plays have actually American characters. And uh, that helped me to realize that I didn't have to write uh, for only a few hundred thousand people. Especially nowadays with new technologies, our plays can go anywhere over the internet, they can be read by anybody in, in the whole world. So uh, suddenly, it, your mind shifts and you realize that you can actually write about anything from anywhere. Even from Barcelona, you can write about something happening in South Africa, or Australia, or, or New York City, like we saw today. Yeah. And it, it, the, the three uh, or four, in your case, for the two uh, plays we heard today, uh, are, do them. Um, were they uh, on stage already yeah, or not? Or not yet? No, uh, mine not. not at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, typing was a stage reading in Spanish in November. Right. Uh, Rafaela Bolafia was the director and was very good. With it. Well, actually, it has been great here also, but yeah. But it was very different to hearing in English. Yeah, that, that's what I wanted to, to know because, I, I mean, for, for a playwright, it absolutely is different to really be able to like hear a play, uh, hear, hear the characters they were writing about, right? Or see them really incarnated somehow on the stage. And I'm always afraid into that kind of uh, different uh, approaches, you know, especially knowing how things are happening, at least in the United States. I don't know if that is that often now in Spain that more and more they are stage readings of plays as opposed to the staging of plays. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not the problem. That's great, I think, you know, because definitely no matter what, they should be stagings one way or another of the play. But that, that sometimes then the audience starts like, uh, you know, like reacting to it and, uh, and saying opinions, etc. that changes then the work in that work in progress, as, mm -hmm. as it's more often called, the play until the final draft of it, no? Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you feel that uh, in Spain, for example, it's, it's more difficult now to get um, productions of your plays? It has, always, it has always been well, difficult. I've always I mean, been, like, but, but no, it yeah. always will be, but <laughs> uh, I guess that what is particular to Spain, at least in, in this moment, I think, is uh, the fact that we, in general, but playwrights work a lot uh, with companies. Mm -hmm. In the sense that um, you don't just write a play and put it in the world hoping for someone to, to uh, uh, mount a production. <laughs> you get involved in the production and um, actually you rewrite, you attend rehearsals and you work on the play uh, because of the production. And it's, it's quite common and uh, I think four out of the eight writers here are both playwrights and directors who direct their own play. I no, but <laughs> things right now are, are worse than ever in Spain. Uh, that's true, but we, we are in a very, very deep recession right now. Uh, your play uh, talked about that. And, and things are going literally crazy. I mean, the public uh, funding has virtually disappeared. Uh, 
taxes have raised, the VAT uh, for uh, theater tickets has, had, have, has raised from 7 to 21 percent. So uh, more and more companies are, uh, can't afford just to keep existing and they are shutting down. Uh, they are flying like, they are falling like flies. It's, it's terrible what's going on right now in Spain. So uh, getting a production done right now, it's more a matter of effort, faith, and good intentions rather than economical profit. So we'll, we'll keep on doing theater, of, of course, but it's, it's really, really hard right now. Since we are a bit late in time, maybe we take a few sure. questions from the audience. If we could put the lights up um, for the audience. And, um, and Tim has a microphone, not only uh, so we can hear you better, but we're also recording it. And so um, yeah, we'll be heard. Maybe uh, three questions. One, what's another one? Two, right. three. This is a very simple question, but now that you are in the US, do you write in uh, Spanish or in English? Do you write in English or Spanish? Uh, well, I, these both plays were uh, written in, in English and then translated to Spanish. And when I was writing in Spanish, everything changed. So I got back to the, It was very difficult. It, it was like uh, writing in stereo or in bilingual uh, with the two texts at the same time in the computer, right, changing this in Spanish, changing this in, in English, changing this, uh, because uh, so it was, it was a mess. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's my own translation. Well, I have to say, well, I have to say that uh, I had the help of uh, Kelly, Laura, Turegano, Laura yeah. Melio, <laughs> Esther. I have <laughs> some American friends and, and actually Kimberly. I think that uh, she changed, the director, she changed uh, some words uh, to, to make it more American, I think. Yeah. I, I should add to that definitely we don't have uh, here, or I don't know, uh, I didn't meet them, the translators, but they definitely did a, a wonderful job. Nancy Festinger, who did the, to translate Picasso and his barber, and of course, Marion Peter Hall, who the, I would say the number one translator of Spanish uh, works has been for forever. He uh, is the one who did the translation of uh, Promised Land of Guillén. And definitely with uh, Iri de la Martin, th there have been translators here that definitely, thanks to them, there have been productions of Spanish playwrights. And definitely, I hope that now with this great book, um, uh, there will be also American productions of your plays. And, and it's thanks to these wonderful translators also that are because they are absolutely important to be to to make them. Uh, available, uh, you know, to the uh, to the audience, uh, and, and of course to the directors and producers. Who was the? Who was uh, the Agueda? over there in the back? Oh. One second, take the uh, mic, please. Uh, Close. My question specifically was, what was the translation process? Mm -hmm. So I would just follow up with to what you just said to, to ask if there was close collaboration between the playwrights and the translators. Uh, in the process? Uh, in my case, yes. I have to say that uh, I usually uh, write in Catalan, not Spanish. Some of my plays I've written in Spanish, but most of them are written in Catalan. And Marion Peter Holt uh, actually translates also from Catalan, and which is a uh, luxury for me. Right. And we, uh, he's translated three of my plays so far. Wow. And we, al we always have a uh, well, an email collaboration because I live in Barcelona, but uh, our relationship during the process is is fast and 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 very fruitful, and we share any doubts that we have and and we discuss them, and it's it's really enjoyable. You okay? Well, in my case, um, unfortunately, Nancy Festinger did a first draft and then died, not no. because of the translation. Uh, <laughs> But um, yes, I, I've worked a lot with the company on, uh, um, this morning on the translation because I, I've, I'm a translator myself and I, I've translated a lot of plays. And I guess that when you work in the theater, you realize that uh, 
a literary translation is one thing, but to go on stage, it has to work properly. And once you're on stage, you realize if it works or it doesn't. So there is a, definitely a job you have to do on the stage with the actors and the director. Agueda? Oh. Well, <laughs> so we have one or two. One, uh, what do you mean with Idem? What do you write your What year did you write it? Uh, a couple of years ago. Because you place me in a very uh, in an aerobic situation. Yeah, well, the, the, yes. the play is set in the future, but of course the, the subject. I really love the translation. I really love the play. I thought it was so modern and yes, so classical. Uh, it was very grand at, at the beginning with its uh, parts, but then it became different and so in a way. And the translation was wonderful. Thanks a lot. I think that there were really wonderful works, and, and tomorrow there is another session with another uh, great playwrights that you should not miss, definitely. Uh, because, uh, I mean, they are, uh, yeah, what do they call it, eight? Yeah, eight tomorrow plays and, right. we have three more plays. We've got um, uh, the wonderful Mar Gomez Gilles' play, uh, Cifras Numbers. Um, we also have Alfred, Alfred Sansol's uh, On the Moon, um, as well as uh, Ernesto Caballero uh, pre presenting Paquita. And then we also have this wonderful panel um, with um, Angelo Netti, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Antonio Netti. Antonio Netti. Onetti, and as well as the great playwright John Guare. Um, and we will hopefully continue this wonderful conversation about playwriting and exchange then. Um, I think this brings us. That thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. 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 Thank you.